Do you have what it takes to accept God's truth? A blessed day to all. This is a reflection for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. In the movie A Few Good Men, two Marines were accused for the death of their fellow Marine, Santiago, in their unit in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. A young Navy lawyer named Daniel Caffey, played by actor Tom Cruise, is assigned to defend them. Lawyer Joan Galloway, played by actress Demi Moore, thinks that Santiago's death may have been a code red incident which, according to the movie plot, is a common but illegal retaliatory hazing practice within the U.S. Marines to enforce discipline. The case ended up being tried in a court-martial proceeding where the base commander, Colonel Nathan R. Jessup, played by actor Jack Nicholson, denies that Code Reds, which are a violation of military guidelines, are practiced but nevertheless, he sees them as a good way of enforcing discipline on the front lines. Caffey asks if Jessup ordered the men not to touch Santiago. Jessup confirms and adds that Santiago was to be transferred to save him from any attacks. Caffey asks if it is possible that the men might take matters into their own hands. Jessup angrily rejects the suggestion stating that as Marines, his men have to obey orders at all times without question. Caffey points out that if Jessup's orders are always obeyed, then there was no reason to transfer Santiago at all. Jessup tries to come up with excuses for transferring Santiago, but Caffey demands to be told the truth, at which point Jessup explodes, You can't handle the truth! Caffey then vehemently demanded that Jessup admit he ordered the code red. In a fury, Jessup yells that he did. At that moment, from being a witness, Colonel Jessup became a defendant for murder. The movie may have been about a search for truth, but it is also an example how people twist it to suit what is convenient. In today's Gospel reading, we find a dialogue that resembles a courtroom deliberation over Jesus' identity and on what He deems to be necessary for people to become truly free. The tension increases as Jesus takes the divine name as His own and tells His audience how estranged they are from God and their Abrahamic ancestry. Three things follow from the initial if of Jesus, which speaks to people who had already expressed belief in Him. If you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples, you will know the truth, the truth will make you free. Jesus says that remaining in Him is the true measure of discipleship. It is the path to truth and freedom. This Truth does not just refer to the opposite of falsehood. It is knowledge of God as revealed in Jesus. Knowing this, truth is knowing God, made present in Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life. Jesus makes this clear when He substitutes the Son for the truth, saying effectively that the Son makes people free. Jesus does not present Himself as a self-evident truth, but that we will come to know Him as the truth if we live with Him and remain connected to Him and His Word. 
Thus, to be free is to take seriously the proposition that we are all enslaved to powers beyond our ability to master. Jesus' mention of freedom offends his hearers, who insist they have always enjoyed freedom. Totally missing his point, Jesus contends that without him, they are enslaved to sin. This makes them inferior because they cannot claim a permanent place or identity in God's family. This passage will continue to find new ways of offending modern sensibilities, especially in today's woke culture. To say that Jesus brings freedom implies that people live in slavery, and many will reject that they are enslaved in any way. May we be guided always by the Holy Spirit and not be misled into thinking that we are capable of providing for our own freedom, knowing that true liberation comes from not just believing or assenting, but in dwelling completely with Jesus. Let us pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, I praise and thank you for revealing the truth. I ask that you set me free from the snares of the devil. Set me free from the darkness that envelop my heart, mind, and soul. This I ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless couples for Christ and our Catholic faith.